Gemini. Ooh, this is your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries. It is for Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Rising signs. It's an energy reading, guys. So it comes out every single week. And what I do, I use astrology, tarot cards, and oracle cards to gather insights into the energy so that you guys know how to best use it. So go ahead and subscribe to this channel and ring that notification bell so that you know when I upload all your favorite content. Uh, Gemini content comes out every single week, every single Thursday at 8.30 Pacific time. That's Los Angeles time. So whether or not you get the notifications, you know, here I am. There's always an extended reading, which I hope you join me for, and you can join me in a very cool way which is the Unbound Membership. The Unbound Membership, I have a series of memberships. Go check them out, please. But the Unbound Membership gives you access to all the extendeds for the life of your membership. And I can't wait. I can't wait to have you on the live chats, Gemini. I really can't. So, all right, Gemini, let's get into the astrology. Um, oh, God. It's not the easiest um, week. Um, and you are Mercury. Oh, yeah. Now, I think there's a little bit of a relief, actually, if it feels like your brain just started working again and that ideas are popping off like crazy and maybe you're getting a lot of new ideas. It's because Mercury is in Aries and that's the house of newness, the house of new beginnings. And so your ruling dignitary is Mercury. And if I mean, this is a great time for you to be extremely creative, especially since it's there with the sun and Chiron, which means you may be gathering inspiration from a lot of stuff that you've gone through, a lot of suffering that you've been through, and that's where the ideas are starting to pop off from. They're coming from your own <sighs> trials and tribulations. And now you're coming out on the other side of it and you're able to share. This is really powerful energy. It's fresh energy. It's fast paced because it's it's in Aries. You can't help it. And you will have a lot of confidence. You know, you, this is not a time when you're going to feel self-conscious. It's a time when you're going to feel extremely confident because Mercury is right there near the sun. You're going to feel extremely confident in what you know and what you've learned. And that's exactly how you're supposed to feel after you've been through some shit because it's not a failure, right? It's a lesson. Kisses. It's a lesson. That's my dog. Um, and ultimately, it's those lessons that you've accumulated over time since Saturn is impacting all of us and Saturn is combust. It's com he combusts. He's combusting Venus. He's combusting Mars. He's like really giving us a check-in between our nodes because it's square to both those nodes. It is a life space check-in for you to kind of like look and review and be like, look at all the ways that I've been damaged and look at all the ways that I've been injured. And well, what do they mean to me? What do they tell me? And all these ideas are going to start coming from that. So get your pen and paper out. Like write those things down because they're going to be popping off like crazy in this energy. You ready? Gemini, Gemini, Gemini. Mm. We have be at home. And then we have be playful. And then we have uh, surrender now. <laughs> okay. Let me think on this. Surrender now is Sagittarian energy, your polar opposite. Um, and this is your energy. Be playful and then be at home. See, this is about being at home, being yourself. This is about actually finding comfort in who you are, which is the most challenging aspect of your character. Well, maybe for others, but even for you is the duality of your character. The dualistic nature is your perpetual challenge because you're supposed to somehow figure out what links the two and how to keep them talking to each other. And so this is a time to really learn how to be at home with yourself and accept yourself, which plays into the sun conjunct Mercury conjunct Chiron. All of these energies coming together is who am I and, and how do I feel about who I am and gathering strength and, and uh, self-confidence in a way. Um, maybe even forging a newer relationship with yourself. Be at home could be literal, which is saying one of the best tools in your arsenal this week is to stay close to home 
You don't want to travel very much. Or if you do, you're going to either do it with friends or just travel really close to home and just maybe just to see old friends. Um, keeping it light, keeping it happy, keeping it playful, or inviting other people over to your home. Um, this is just a good time for you right now to get comfortable in your own space. This could actually be fourth house energy too with your family. I'm not feeling that so much though. This is Cancer Gemini. Okay. Make your dreams real. Bam. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of dreams coming out because Neptune and Jupiter are conjunct and the mind blowing expansion is ridiculous. So really, really trust your dreams and take note of them as soon as you can so you don't forget them. Um, but this is you hard at work. And this is what I, I said to you in the beginning of the channeled message. There was a sense of writing something writing something down, maybe even, maybe in some ways, the writing process is going to help you put all your thoughts together and transformation is beautiful. That's becoming the better part of yourself. And maybe it's this writing process that's actually helping you. Because when I think of spider weaving, writing, creating something, being in a creative modality, this is very scorpionic energy though. So it is very much transcending your darker self. Now, how do you do that? Well, you have to confront it. You have to honor it. And what I think is you have. You've spent the past probably two years doing that. You've seen the darkest of days and now there's this coming out and being able to fly because of it. Don't ever underestimate your struggles, right? And then we have a dragon, fly, spirit, truth, transcends illusion. This was in the, oh, holy shit. You better stop the presses. Stop. Somebody that lied on you, a situation where there was lying on you is now rectifying itself because new information is coming out that helps you be exonerated. Or, I mean, yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Make your dreams real. It could also be just like, like a very manipulative energy, right? Walking in a spider's web, feeling like you have to walk or watch your step or else you're going to get eaten and ripped apart. Like there's always a predator out there, right? And then all of a sudden transcending that and being able to fly away. This is your sign, Gemini, that you can finally fly away from those really difficult situations that threatened your health, your happiness, or your heart. They're like, you know how you were going to feel about the world. Truth transcends illusions. Everybody was lost in their fucking dream. I, I, I don't know how long ago this was. It doesn't even have to be a couple of years ago. This is, but this definitely a sense of you would have been aware of it and probably disagreed with people, but it's like somebody was either intentionally lying or just like didn't, d couldn't see, couldn't see, didn't realize anything couldn't see, didn't like, 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 um, that's, I'm saying couldn't see because it's like the illusion may have come over them. The illusion may have come over them and they believed it, believe their own bullshit. So were they telling the truth? No. But were they intentionally lying? No, but it doesn't matter because it still was, wasn't the truth. And this could have been, because this is Aquarius energy, kind of your family, your whole family, a public, the community around you was just not seeing straight. Most likely because of what makes people feel that way. Uh, fear. It's usually fear. Just letting you know. And make your dreams real and transformation is beautiful. You just keep working on your shit. And sometimes it's like, okay. If I ain't safe out there, I'm going to find a place to be safe in here. And that could have been the best thing for you because what it did was it forced you inward. And then you had to dig yourself out of that by putting, by digging stuff out of, like putting things, putting stuff out there about you or getting it out through creativity. And it was that process that actually helped you to build out. Could have been the best time to take this retreat just to like relax and lighten the mood not take things so seriously. This is a good energy for you right now. 
to just take your own space and not go anywhere. You know, it's like moth energy, surrender now, that Sagittarian energy, just riding right into the flame. It's kind of like, no, I don't want the heat right now. I don't want to go anywhere. Don't. Have fun and enjoy yourself at home this week. As boring as that may sound, bullshit, because tremendous amounts of shit, like tremendous amount of energy is just going to start flowing out of you, especially based on this situation. It wouldn't come up if it wasn't impacting you now, where you were just like, people were just lost in delusion. Maybe you were even delusional and you were completely caught up in it and lost in it. And then where did it get you? Right? Talking about that experience and what it, what it did to your soul. All right, give me some more, guys. Give me more. Give me more. Tell me more. Tell me more. We have know your worth. Bam. And then take the lead. Bam. Know your worth and take the lead. Know your worth and take the lead. This is a silent lead. This isn't like, um, I'm taking over. This is leading through example because this is Aries energy. Know your worth is Aries energy. It's, I don't care if I stink, I smell good. You know, loving yourself first, including your imperfections. And that's not being delusional of your imperfections. It's facing them. I'm a skunk. I can get stinky. I get it. But I still get to love to be near the flowers. I still, I still get, even though I'm a skunk, I still get to love the smell of the flowers and I still get to be around them. And it's like people got to love me for who I am, including me. Right? But it's having the balls to know, like love yourself for who you are and be who you are. That is what is taking the lead or turning you back into or turning you into a leader that people are going to start to admire. Because honestly... It's maybe people have smelt your stink and gotten over the shock of it. It's now a sense of, I just have to accept them for who they are. But I think that this is more about becoming an example because of your tremendous sense of self-worth, which you had to work really hard on. So it, it, this could be something new that's coming out just because you've just kind of developed the strength inside of you to come out and be who you are out loud. Take the lead doesn't show up in many readings and it hasn't showed up in anybody else's reading so far. And I'll be getting a lot of the same cards, but not this one. So ultimately it's something you're doing. It's behavior, how to love yourself, how to be yourself, how to own yourself, how to take responsibility for yourself. Something about who you are that they're starting to see has really great leadership attributes. And it's not like you're taking the lead. It's you're becoming the leader by being the right example, by, by living the right. That's, that's what stag shows up for. Stag doesn't show up for just anybody. That's a special visitor. So you actually may have a special visitor. I'm not talking about your period. I'm talking so, like legitimately, I'm talking about you may have a special visitor, somebody actually showing up out of the blue to say, you know, I want you. Uh, fulfillment of wishes is here in the future. Fulfillment of wishes. What does that mean? I don't know. I'm going to get to it. But it's good, right? It's a, that's, that's, that's a good message to have. Fulfill them wishes, Gemini. Fill them wishes. Um, I think you had to go through the worst to get to the best. That's what I think. So what is this, guys? Can you tell me, God? Fulfillment of wishes for Gemini. What are these wishes? What is it? Oh, it, it, it like legitimately conflict and chaos. You wished for conflict and chaos. I don't know. Is that true? Hold on. The fates and poised. Ah, it's not about fulfilling your wishes. Okay. Stop. Let's go back. Conflict and chaos, the fates and poised. So between now and this fulfillment of wishes, 
there is a conflict that's going to arise in your life or maybe in your community, society, whatever. And that is led by the stars. That's what fates are. That's why you see the stars, right? This is a fated situation that you have no control over. And this conflict and chaos comes at just the right time because you're ready. And why are you, that's what poised means. And why are you ready, Gemini? Why? That's why you're taking the lead. Fate is legitimately writing the script and you're playing right in because you've been prepared. But what have you really been prepared for? You've been prepared to eat your own shit. You are now prepared to look at the worst of yourself. You are prepared to have the whole fucking world turn on you. You are prepared to, you are prepared to find yourself and wade through shit this deep. It's like legitimately trained you Navy SEAL style to be ready for this. So it's not like you, you've already done it. You've done the work. So when all hell breaks loose on some level, and yes, we will be getting into the specifics of that. But when all hell breaks loose, it's fate is like perfectly synchronized for you to be ready. And that's how you fulfill your wishes. It's like you got to walk through fire to get to, you got to walk through hell to get to heaven. But you already got your like thermal suit and suntan lotion. So y'all just going to be like coasting through and be like, oh, I understood the assignment. <laughs> I can I'm ready, <laughs> right, right? Maybe you even wrote the book. I mean, y'all tell me in the comments, what have you been going through? I wanna know. I do also wanna know what this chaos and conflict is. Because it, you know, I mean, hello, it's concerning. We have a time for healing. Oh. That's beautiful. That's not the chaos and conflict. This is a time for healing right now. Also, it could be there's an opportunity for healing. And it could be the healing on the outside of you that is now exonerating what you personally went through. So it's like, you know, your family starts to argue about stupid shit and then they realize that, oh, wait, maybe Gemini wasn't so wrong after all. You know, maybe they kind of understood or knew or, um, you know, all that shit that they did is nothing compared to this. Why are we beating on them? Why do we, why do we treat them like that? Yeah, it's kind of like that. Um, but still, I want to ask the question. Chaos and conflict. What is this chaos and conflict? What is it? Okay, there's a lot that's coming out about this. And it's got to do with the Four of Swords. There's a couple of cards that came out. But the one that turned over is the Four of Swords. So this is reflection. It could be a reflection upon one of the craziest times in your life. So upon reflection of one of the craziest times in your life, fates all came together. It's like everything came together at the perfect moment to make you realize I'm ready for this. This could have something to do with an actual war. I don't know if that's metaphoric for a war that's going on in your life. But Four of Swords is the soldier that's returned home without his comrades. And he's sitting there in, revel, in, in um, reverie thinking, not revelry as in celebration, but reverie as in remembering. Um, all that they've been through, all that he's been through in order to appreciate all that he has see you're going to find yourself in a position gemini where you're not going to need all that much because of the shit that you've learned up until now it's almost like you got your survival bunker already and if people didn't want to listen to you before well that's okay they don't need to be cozy and safe with you now but i, I hate to tell you say i told you so but Mm, I'm not going to go to the That's kind of what it is. As, as, as petty as that sounds, that's kind of what it is. But ultimately, what it, steps down, what it comes down to is, yes, 
exhale, it's time for you to relax, it's time for you to reflect. And it's a time to, for you to make gratitude your new attitude. It's time. Ooh, Knight of Chalices. There's an offer of love. See, I think people are going to be general. In general, people are going to start coming at you with love. Maybe even people are going to offer you a white flag, like a, a, like a peace offering. Right? Somebody's coming you, to you to make peace or somebody's coming up on you to make an offer because they admire you. Knight of Swords is about acting upon your emotions, not overreacting. Uh, Knight, of, Knight of Cups Upright is, it's just, it could be you. I know that you're not cups, but ultimately um, Knight of Cups is usually somebody who's very poetic, somebody who's very artistic, somebody who's very emotional and uses their emotions to guide their art. That could be too, right? And you are poised in reflection to start putting out some of your best work, whatever you do. There's two more cards on the table. I can't wait to get to them. I will see you guys in the extended. Links are below.